Welcome back, Padres. Hope you guys are staying safe and dry. It is raining out there. Um, we have a test this week. So um, we're going to talk about the test, what's on the test, and how to prepare for the test. Uh, so we're going to go through this uh, wave test overview that we normally do, but there are some minor, maybe mid-range major changes, but nothing, nothing too drastic, I guess. So the test uh, is going to be 100 points like normal. Uh, the test is going to be about 20 questions, which is also normal. Uh, it is all multiple choice, which once again, normal. Uh, you can rejoice in that you can use a calculator. Uh, there will be Desmos uh, within each problem. So you can, of course, use Desmos. But if you have a calculator at home, go for it. Um, also, because this will be done online at home, you can use your notes. Um, so any notes that you have handwritten, have those at your side, especially the equations. So uh, make sure you have the equations handy um, for um, the calculation problems. However, um, there is going to be a time limit on this test. The time limit is going to be one hour. So make sure uh, you finish the test within an hour. I believe it's going to cut you off if you're not done by that time. Um, so even though you can use your notes, uh, do not try to look up every single problem. If you try to look up every single problem, you are not going to finish the test. So obviously, I expect you to know things. If it's just a lookup, if, if, if I expect you to look up every question, um, you know, you don't really know anything. You're just looking everything up. So I expect you to know a lot of stuff and be able to apply it. Um, but obviously, you can use your notes for the occasional thing that you is right at the tip of your tongue that you need uh, some assistance with. Um, you need to finish the test by Wednesday at 3 p.m. So you can take the test Monday. You can take the test anytime on Tuesday. And you can take the test Wednesday up until 3. When you finish the test, uh, it will not tell you your score. So um, like I said, take it Monday, take it Tuesday, take it Wednesday. Make sure you are done by 3. So that means make sure you've started by 2 p.m., so you can be finished by 3 p.m. on Wednesday. Um, at 3 p.m. Wednesday, the results will be posted. So um, I will put them in Aries, and um, you can also go back into the test and see which problems you got wrong and which ones you got right. Um, I'll open it up so that you'll actually be able to see what the right answer is. Um, so that's gonna happen 3 o'clock on Wednesday. And then um, if you need to retake the test, um, you can retake the test on Thursday uh, or you can retake the test on Friday or actually, yeah, Thursday or Friday. Um, and Friday up until um, almost midnight on Friday. So um, and once again, make sure it's finished by 11.55. So you might want to make sure you're starting by 10.55 p.m. on Friday. So just to be clear, uh, take the test either Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, finish before 3. And then you can check your answers after Wednesday afternoon. Uh, review them Wednesday afternoon. Review it Thursday, get any extra studying in, and you can retake the test by Friday around midnight. Um, also, I wanted to say um, there will be uh, three opportunities uh, to talk with me in between. Uh, there'll be a Zoom meeting on uh, Tuesday. Um, I'll be there for as for at least an hour. Um, if there's people there, if there's nobody there, then I'm going to leave. It's just going to be question and answers. Uh, there's office hours on Wednesday. Uh, so that's by appointment. So if you want to meet with me on Wednesday, uh, email me and we'll set up a time. Um, actually, the time there's a time window, but um, set up a time in, in that window. And then Friday morning, I'm also available for a Zoom. Uh, so check uh, Moodle uh, for those. And I think there was one more thing I wanted to say. I can't think of what it was. All right. So um, things to study for the test. Uh, study the notes. Uh, you have your notes that you wrote in the slide presentation and also the video notes. So you can go back and rewatch the videos, uh, go back and look through the slides, 
Uh, look at the videos in the slides because those were not always included in uh, the videos that I made where I was talking. Uh, we had wave problems that we did a long time ago. Uh, those talked about frequency, wavelength, period, um, the wave speed equation, um, longitudinal, transverse, crest, trough, uh, wave basics. Uh, we then did EM problems part one, and that had the EM spectrum. Uh, this was the first week of our distance learning. And then the second week of distance learning, we had uh, EM problems part two, which was talking about ionizing energy and AM FM. And then we had uh, sound problems that we talked about the Doppler effect and resonance. So um, I would you know, go over those problems again, go over the notes again. Uh, there's a wave practice test. It is gonna be entirely optional. So if you wanna look at some practice problems, they'll be up there. Uh, the answers are also going to be there. So you can just take a look at the answers and, and review that way. Uh, there is a Kahoot. The Kahoot is concepts only. And um, there's a bunch of questions. You can quiz yourself, take it multiple times. And for honors, uh, there are some extra practice problems for the Doppler effect calculations. And um, it is a quiz. Um, you can take it as many times as you want. Every time you retake it, it's going to give you different questions. So um, take it six, seven, eight times if you want. It's gonna give you different questions on the Doppler effect. Uh, the questions are gonna be worded exactly the same. It's just the numbers are gonna be different every time you take the quiz. Um, so that's something new that you can uh, try if you want extra help on the Doppler effect problems. Um, I would still probably start with the practice test before I go to the, the Doppler effect extra practice problems though. So half the test is gonna be concepts. So um, crest versus trough. So if we have our wave and our wave is going like this, uh, the crest is the top of the wave, uh, the trough is the bottom of the wave. Uh, amplitude is the height of the wave from the middle. The node is the part of the wave that's not moving. So if my hand is kind of doing this, or if the wave is doing this, uh, right here where my fingers are, uh, it's not moving, that would be the node. Frequency is vibrations per second or wiggles per second. So it's how fast you're wiggling it. Uh, for sound wave, or for sound waves, uh, the frequency and the pitch are the same thing. The wavelength is the length of one wave cycle. And you can measure that um, as long as you have one crest and one trough included. So you can have, uh, you can measure from crest to crest or trough to trough, uh, as long as you have one full wave, one full crest, one full trough. The period is the time it takes to make one wave. It's measured in seconds. Uh, wavelength is measured in meters because it's a length. Frequency is measured in uh, hertz. Transverse waves, uh, these waves. Uh, all EM waves travel like this. Uh, ocean waves, um, most waves travel that way. Longitudinal travel this way. Those are compression waves. Those are your sound waves, your shock waves. A vacuum is nothing. It's just empty space, uh, like outer space. A medium is what the wave is traveling through. So um, sound waves are traveling through the air. Uh, light waves, whatever the light wave is traveling through. A tsunami, the medium would be water. Reflection is the bouncing of waves. So it bounces off like light hitting a mirror or uh, an echo where the sound is bouncing off the back of a cave and coming back to you, the reflection. Refraction is where the light comes in and it bends. Um, and it's bending because it's changing speed. It's normally changing speed when it changes mediums. Um, and we talked about how refraction doesn't just happen with light, it happens with um, earthquakes it happens with uh, sound waves, which is why we can hear things at night from farther away. And so refraction happens. Um, all waves refract. All waves reflect also. Um, and refraction once again happens because waves are changing speed. And it's usually because they're changing uh, mediums. It can change a medium and not change speeds. So if it goes from one medium into another and then there's no speed change, then it's not going to bend. It only bends if there's a speed change. So a fraction happens, speed change. Defraction. Uh, defraction is if uh, waves go through a slit 
and it creates those rainbows and it kind of spreads out, um, which is why we can uh, hear things around uh, walls, like around the corner of a wall, if the door's open. Um, it happens with water. Um, it happens with light. Uh, we saw it when we held up the little diffraction gratings and all the colors, uh, we held up to the light, you could see all the, the colors were shining through. Um, so that's the fraction. Resonance is with the wine glass. It is when the forced vibration matches the natural frequency. So if something uh, wants to vibrate this fast, and if you can push it at the exact same time that it wants to vibrate, the vibration is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger in amplitude, and it's going to cause uh, things to break. And we saw that happen with uh, buildings. We saw that happen with uh, bridges. We saw that happen with wine glasses. Um, kids on a swing, same thing. So those are four examples of uh, resonance happening where the forced vibration matches the natural frequency of an object, causes an increase in amplitude. The Doppler effect is new. So uh, that is an apparent change in frequency due to motion of either an object, uh, the source object, or the observer. So uh, the sound is actually not actually changing. If you're riding a motorcycle, you hear you hear one sound, that's the engine. But if you're on the, the ground, you hear so it sounds like the sound is changing, but the actual engine, the sound is making one sound. And so why does that change? Well, if the object is coming towards you, those waves are getting closer together, closer together waves. Uh, are higher frequency. So it sounds like me. Uh, when it goes away from you, uh, the waves are spread out more. Uh, so that's a lower frequency. So it's new. That's why we hear the new. Uh, also with mosquitoes, when they're by your ear, you hear me. Uh, it's not actually changing the sound. The sound that the mosquito is making is one sound. But it appears to us that the sound is changing because the object is moving. So it's an apparent change in uh, the frequency of an object, and it sounds like it's changing because either the object is moving that's making the sound or the observer is moving. Um, it also doesn't happen with just sounds. It happens with light, and it can happen with other waves as well. EM spectrum, we're talking about radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, uh, X-rays and gamma rays, they're all the same. It's just some are wiggling like this. You go a little faster, you get the next one. You go a little faster, you get the next one, all the way up to gamma rays. So the waves at the beginning, like radio waves, have low energy. They have low, uh, sorry, short wavelength. Sorry, low energy, low frequency. But because you're wiggling slow, there's a long wavelength, very long. Uh, the faster waves, like gamma rays and the waves on the other side, um, they have lots of energy. Uh, the frequency is very high. Because you're wiggling fast, the distance between the waves, the wavelength, is very short. Um, they all travel at the same speed, 300 million meters per second. Um, they can travel through a vacuum in outer space. Um, and they're basically all the same type of wave. Um, ionizing radiation are the last three, ultraviolet, x-rays, gamma rays. Uh, those have enough energy that they can strip electrons off of atoms, and they can um, cause radiation poisoning. Um, all EM spectrum waves are a form of radiation. X-rays are radiation. Visible light that we're seeing right now, radiation. Radio waves, it's radiation. So radi all radiation uh, is not bad. Only the ionizing radiation is bad. Uh, so the other types of radiation from the EM spectrum, they're not harmful to us. Um, AM versus FM are ways to transmit information. Uh, AM stands for amplitude modulation. So we can embed the signal or data into uh, the amplitude of the wave. Uh, FM stands for frequency modulation. The information is embedded in the frequency of the wave. And um, there's different pros and cons. AMs waves can travel uh, further. FM waves are better quality, and we can actually store more information in those waves. Um, and 
Um, we can also use uh, AM and FM, not just for radio waves, but we can use it for other EM spectrum waves, like light waves, which we saw with the laser. And you can actually transmit a signal data through a laser beam across the room, uh, which is what we kind of saw in uh, a couple videos. Sound waves, you should know sound waves are a longitudinal wave. Uh, sound waves cannot travel through space. They need a medium. Uh, sound waves um, are the amplitude is the volume of the wave. Um, sound waves, um, what else? Might have been it. Um, always carry energy. All waves carry energy. That's, that's a similar thing from all waves. So the thing that moves from one side to the other is the energy. Energy is the thing that's moving. So the other half of the test is going to be math. So know your units. Uh, we had three new units. Frequency is measured in hertz. Period is measured in seconds. And wavelength is measured in meters. Um, for college prep, uh, we basically had three equations, but really it's just one. Uh, frequency is the reciprocal of the period, and the period is the reciprocal of the frequency. So you can just flip frequency and period. And the only real equation we had is velocity equals frequency times wavelength, or wavelength times frequency. Doesn't really matter which order. Frequency and wavelength are in, you just multiply the two together. Get the velocity of the wave. So that's it for college prep. For honors, um, we also had two other equations. Um, that is not the resonance equation. Uh, that is Snell's law. Uh, Snell's law deals with refraction, so that is not resonance. Uh, so remember, it's one, two, one, two, two, one. A lot of people are missing that. They're putting one, two over here. And then um, I'm either going to, I'm going to give you um, three variables. You don't have to solve for the fourth. So if I give you the angles and the Vs, ignore the ends, pretend they're not there. If I give you the angles and the ends, ignore the Vs, pretend they're not there. Snell's law dealing with uh, refraction. And in the Doppler effect, um, here's our equation for the Doppler effect. And um, the main thing that I'm getting from people is these velocities uh, sorry, the, the V's in red are 344 in air. It's the speed of how fast the wave goes. So sound waves that we're hearing are traveling at 344. Uh, these can be negative. So they're negative if they're moving away from the other object. So VO and VF or VO and VS don't matter if it's going left or right. Left or right does not matter for this equation. This equation, the V O, oh, it is negative if it's going away from the source. So if you're running away from the sound or moving away from the sound, then the numerator would be V minus V O. You have to flip it if it's if the observer is going away from the sound. Okay? V S is negative if the source is going away from the observer. So if you have an observer here, and this is what's making the noise, if the, if the source is moving away, then the source would be negative. And so you would have V minus negative Vs. So the denominator would become a plus V plus Vs. So VO and Vs are negatives, not if they're going left and right. They're negatives if they're moving away from the other one. All right? And that is the end. So um, please send me emails if you have questions. Please attend the Zoom, um, especially at the beginning, so I can know you're there and help you. Um, like I said, if no one shows up to the Zooms, then um, I'll leave, but I will stay as long as there's people there asking questions. Um, or sign up for office hours on Wednesday. Um, good luck. Hope you do well. And once again, any questions, uh, please ask. Um, questions are hugely important in learning. And, um, you know, it's, it's a, little, a little harder, a little more difficult being that we're, we're learning distance. Distancely? I was going to say distancely. Not a word. That's why I don't teach English. Anyway, um, please let me know if you have any questions. And otherwise, good luck on the test. Um, study a lot.
And um, I will see you next time, Padres.